All right, right now, technology regaining that strength today. This is Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos is calling out Google and Microsoft from backing away from working with the Pentagon, saying, quote, if big tech companies are going to turn their backs on the U.S. Department of Defense, this country is going to be in big trouble. Brian Belsky is back with me, along with Melissa Armo of Stock Swoosh. Melissa, of course, is referring to his rivals who don't want to work at the Department of Defense. They're too much above that. I, I think he's absolutely right. What are your thoughts? I think it's really a shame that Google isn't going to participate in this project. First of all, it's not good for the shareholders because obviously you want the, the company to do well. It's a big contract. And second of all, I think it shows political bias for them not wanting to do it for the reasons they're saying. And I just don't, it's not supporting the country. And I, Google, I think the stock overall, as far as the tech sector, has not looked good. They're 150 points off the previous high, which was back in July. So if you look at the stock and you compare it to Amazon, I mean, Amazon's clearly doing better than Google. Well, Google also facing uh, some regulatory pressure in the EU side, a $5 billion fine. I think also hidden amongst all of this is the fact that Amazon, Brian, starting to take a lot of those search, uh, that search business from them. It is, and I think uh, something that's very, very understated and maybe not understood with respect to Amazon is that Amazon's technically in the consumer discretionary sector, and we had a huge sector change uh, this month uh, with the new communication services sector where Netflix went into that new sector. So if you think about where performance has been in consumer discretionary, 95% of the upside this year has been, before the sector change, been Amazon and Amazon Netflix. Amazon is, is uh, Amazon, yeah, and and. It's in consumer. Which one is in a consumer discretionary? Amazon. Amazon right? is now. Right. So the problem is, is that from a fundamental perspective, what traditional retailing stocks do you want to own, like really own instead of trade? And it's really difficult with respect to what's happening in consumer discretionary in particular. They're 22 or 23 percent weight of the consumer discretionary. So that obviously is huge. But there are other opportunities there as well. Uh, we saw 7.1 million jobs out there. We know wages are on an up, upswing. Two thirds of the economy, Melissa, is the, is the consumer. So you would have to suspect with these companies doing omni-channel that there are opportunities broadly in this market. To buy, you mean? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, earnings season typically is the time when you'd want to either take profits at certain stocks before the earnings report because you never know what they're going to do, or you would want to enter the stocks and get in after the earnings. It's, it's always risky to do that before the earnings. We're talking about Netflix is out tonight. That may have an enormous move after the close. So Well, we know it's going to have an enormous move. <laughs> well, <laughs> but The reason we brought you on is to tell us it was going to be up or down. Well, I will tell you this. I'm looking into my crystal ball and I'm telling you Netflix is a better long than a short. So if Netflix gap, here's in an ideal world, if Netflix gaps up tonight between 390 and 400, it's an immediate buy and will make brand new all time highs. You'll chase it. You would chase it. I it's not chasing it. I'm telling you it's going to go over 420. So it's a, it's a great buy of 390, 400 if it gaps up tonight, which I don't know if it will. I would if it say falls, it's interesting it's so because I've, I've followed Netflix for a long time. People used to laugh at me uh, four or five years ago on this channel when I said you got to own it. Uh, uh, but more recently, Netflix and Facebook, if they, they didn't bounce like the way they used to after missing. I thought that was an interesting sign. I don't know. Maybe, maybe lower expectations is what the stock needed, Brian. Well, I think Facebook also, we know, faces uh, bigger structural secular issues with its core product in decline. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think when you're in this earnings environment, Charles, we're in a market of stocks. And I think that's what the most exciting thing is. As these stocks come out with different results, you have to really focus on the fact that we've entered, I believe, an active stock picking environment where you want to focus on stocks and less on industries and sectors and, by the way, ETFs. We were reminded of that uh, even before last week when the S&P 500, over 200 of these names still in the red. 20% uh, of them in bear markets. And then, of course, in technology, 90% had a correction, which only means they came down 10% from their highs. So we know this has been a stock picker's market. Real quick, Brian, because yeah. you talked about financials. Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs out this morning. Right now, Morgan Stanley is the biggest winner in the financials. But the financial ETF still doesn't have that ump. It still looks relatively flat compared to consumer services, healthcare, real estate, technology. It's still not leading the right. way. What's wrong with the financials? A couple things. I mean, from a broader perspective, uh, we would not be buying ETFs. We'd be buying stocks, and we'd be concentrated in those stocks. Not all banks were created equal. I think the primary theme for the next three to five years are wealth management and commercial 
commercial banking. You want to buy those themes that have scalable businesses. So some of the regionals can't compete with Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, or Goldman. And I think that's the biggest problem. The other thing, too, is that the majority of analysts, quite frankly, that are analyzing these companies have less than 10 years' experience. So all they remember is the credit crisis, and all they remember is that stocks only go up because of interest rates going down. People are having a hard time understanding that financials can, will, and should do better in this type of environment. I know, but overall, the, I have to say, none of the financials did anything that they were supposed to do in the last four days of the earnings that reported, not one. The fact that Goldman and, and Morgan Stanley are rallying today and they gapped up in the morning, it's a, it's a pathetic rally to me for the day. They should have done better. J.P. Morgan Chase didn't do it. And this whole entire year of 2018, the banks have disappointed. And when you look at the fact that interest rates have been rising, you say to yourself, well, wait a minute, market's bullish, making new highs all the time and the financials are lagging. And to me, that doesn't right. make any sense. Guys, thank you both very much. Melissa and Brian, a great conversation. Dow Jones Industrial Average, we're up near almost 500 points. We're going to hand over a pretty sizable rally. We'll continue to call it the CP effect. Liz Clayman, over to you. Isn't this interesting?